Chapter 3, Incident Commander. San Diego Engine 9 is at scene of a multi-vehicle traffic accident involving the school bus. The school bus was on fire prior to our arrival. The fire has been extinguished. We have multiple patients. This is a multi-casualty incident. Engine 9 is going to assume Elm Street IC, requesting PD for traffic control. I am activating MCI protocol. Go ahead, Abel. I want you to pull 100 foot of inch and three quarter protection line. Guys, grab the MCI bag and meet me to the side of the rig for your assignments. The incident commander is the person responsible for all aspects of an emergency response, including quickly developing incident objectives, managing all incident operations, and application of resources as well as responsibilities for all persons involved. The incident commander is usually the first officer on scene. The incident commander sets priorities and defines the organization of the incident response teams and the overall incident action plan. The role of incident commander may be assumed by senior or higher qualified officers upon their arrival as the situation dictates. Even if subordinate positions are not assigned, the incident commander position will always be designated or assumed. The incident commander may, at their own discretion, assign officers who may be from the same agency or from assisting agencies to subordinate or specific positions for the duration of the emergency. Scene Size Up once the incident commander position is established, a scene size-up must be rapidly conducted and communicated. A scene size-up consists of three critical elements. Identification of hazards to ensure scene safety, an initial determination of the scope of the incident, and the determination of what additional resources are needed. Determining if the scene is safe to enter and identifying hazards is a critical component of the size-up. Traffic hazards, fires, hazardous materials, and wires down are all examples of safety issues that must be addressed and communicated to dispatch and responding resources to ensure crews arrive with the proper state of caution and in the appropriate personal protective equipment. The scope of the incident is a mental picture of what the incident commander is seeing and can vary in nature from a simple vehicle accident to complex building collapses and rescues. Providing an estimated patient count is also part of scope. When assessing if additional resources are required to effectively mitigate the incident, an incident commander must take into account resources initially dispatched. It is important to note that the dispatch of resources is based upon information reported to the 911 operator and may not represent the incident you actually encounter. An effective incident commander will order additional resources early, utilizing the resource notification system in Annex D. That process is covered later in this video. Naming the incident appropriately and announcing location when communicating the size up is critical. Short, succinct, one word command names are preferred for ease of communications. The word should best represent the building, street name, or location of the incident. For example, Lake Jennings Park Road could be easier said as just Jennings IC. Once the size up is completed and communicated, the incident commander sets priorities and makes position assignments. One of the first priorities is to identify a staging area to ensure responding units will be able to enter the scene safely and in an organized manner. This will assure that transportation corridors remain clear for the ingress and egress of transportation units. Effective staging is critical to the successful management of an MPI or MCI. Assigning key positions to arriving units in an effective manner is critical. Position assignments should not be based solely on pre-established policies. The incident commander must remain flexible and determine the best use of resources. For example, a policy that identifies the first in firefighter paramedic as always being the medical communications coordinator may find that that unit is better utilized to effect a rescue or extinguish a fire. As resources arrive, the incident commander must give clear directions for each task or assignment required to meet the incident objectives and should encourage the use of ICS position vests. 
The importance of these vests is to clearly identify the key ICS positions so that personnel know who to report to when assigned by the incident commander. Vests also help eliminate the duplication of duties by clearly identifying who is in charge of a specific unit, division, or group. In the following chapter, we will look at the key positions the incident commander will assign and identify roles and location of these positions in the incident command system. Hi, Harlan Engine 9. Yes. Um, I want you to, I'm going to assign you the treatment unit leader. I want you to set up your treatment areas right next to where the uh, triage unit leader is, right next to San Diego Engine 9. Here's your vest and your duties and responsibilities. Okay, copy that. Treatment leader will set up.